Okay, everybody, this is the start of Chemistry 131. Uh, you should have already read Chapter 1 and reviewed the math and concepts in there. And we're going to go ahead and skip over and start with Chapter 2 today. Now, Chapter 2 is about measurements and doing calculations and these things called significant figures and conversions, okay? So the first thing we have to know is that we, whenever we make a measurement, we have to have a number, we have to have a number and a unit to go with these, okay? And so something might, something might look like um, 1.24 centimeters, and the 1.24 would be the number, and the centimeters would be the unit. Okay, now, hold on here. All right, now, one thing that we're gonna have to do in any time, if you could mute your microphone, one thing that we're going to have to do whenever we have any sort of calculation is you must use units. Okay, now we're going to do something called canceling units um, as we do calculations. We're going to do something called canceling units. And the only way you can cancel units is if you have units to cancel. If you don't use units, you can't cancel them. So get in the habit of always using units. I mean, I know you're doing, gonna do calculations and you say, but Mr. Pierce, I know it's centimeters. Why do I have to write down centimeters? And I will say, because you're gonna need them. You're gonna need the units. Okay. And so what kind of units do we have? Okay, so we have different kinds of units for different things. And the first thing we're gonna have units is we have units for length, volume, mass, time, and temperature. Those, those are many of the units that we have. Now we have two kinds of units in this world. We have what's called SI, and we have, in your textbook, it calls it metric. Now what makes metric metric? Metric, all that metric means is powers of 10. That's all that means is powers of 10, okay? Now, SI means system international. It's actually a French, French phrase. And there's a common uh, confusion that SI and metric are two different things. And I'll tell you what's going on here. SI is also metric, all right? SI is also metric and SI units are specific units. There's all sorts of metric units in this world, and I'm going to list them out for you, but there's only one SI unit. And so don't get confused and think, you know, SI is a totally different thing from metric. It's actually metric. It's just a specific kind of metric. So let's start with, let's start with length. And that's how far or how long? How far or how long? Now, for SI, we have something called the meter. There it is. And its abbreviation is M, little m. And a meter is roughly about uh, half the height of how tall someone is. So if we have someone who is normal height, a meter might be about from here to there. Okay. For instance, I am uh, roughly about 1.8 meters tall from here to here is me. And I'm about 1.8 meters. So, and also a meter, if you take someone from arm to arm, 
from here to there, from arm, or should I say from a uh, fingertip to nose, that's roughly about a meter as well. That's about a meter. Okay, give you an idea. It's always good. Uh, it's always good to know about the, the general idea of what one should be. Okay, now let's take a look at um, what would be powers of 10 for metric. Well, like I said, SI is metric. And so we can certainly use a meter for powers of 10 and metric. We can use a meter. Why not? If you're trying to measure the length of a building or maybe a meter is pretty good. But if we're dealing with people, maybe we might want to use something like a centimeter. And a centimeter is little less than an inch. It's a little less than an inch. And maybe if we're measuring smaller things, we might use something called a millimeter, which is a tenth of a centimeter. And if we're talking about like cells and things like that, maybe we're going to use something like a micrometer, which is a funny looking U, but this is one millionth of a meter and so forth. Okay. But look, if you look here, you'll see in both cases, we still use meters. We can. Might not be the most convenient unit to use. And that brings up a point. Which one do you use? Well, some calculations you have to use the SI unit. But if you have a choice, well, what you do is you just pick the unit that works for you. So if you're trying to measure someone's height, maybe you use centimeters. If you're trying to measure the diameter of a red blood cell, you might use micrometers. It just depends. It just depends. Now the next, the next unit is not so much length, it will be volume. There we go. Now let's not get this confused because we're going to have volume and mass and people get them backwards all the time. Volume is the space occupied. All right. And the SI unit for volume is the meters cubed. Now a meter cubed is a pretty big box. That's a box that's like this big compared to my stick figure over here. And it's a box that's a meter on all three, all three edges. All right, just a second. Let me, um, I'm going to stop sharing here for just a second. And I'm going to go over here and participants, and I'm going to mute on entry, mute all. There we go. All right, and let me get back to sharing. All right, so you may ask yourself, why is it meters cubed? Well, what's the SI unit for length? The SI unit for length is the meter. And if you're going to measure this box over here, well, what unit are you going to use to measure the length? Well, you have to use a meter because that's the SI unit for length. And so how do you do volume? Well, that's length times width times height. And if you do a meter times a meter times a meter, well, you have a meter cubed. Okay, so it has to be a meter cubed. Now, that's not a very convenient volume. Um, that's a big box. And if you were trying to move with a box, that, that was if you try to move out of your apartment or, or move into a house or whatever, um, that's a pretty big box. That's like a yard by yard by yard. You're not going to fill it with much and be able to pick it up. However, there are much more convenient units, which are powers of 10, which are metric. And you may have heard of this. You have the leader which is also uh, usually it's either capital L or it's a lower L, yeah, a liter. And that's like a, you know, if you have like a two liter Coke or a two liter Pepsi, you know, you've seen what a liter looks like. A liter is a little bit more than a quart. And so that might be convenient, let's say if you're talking about, you know, um, two, two liter Cokes or, 
or whatever, but a much more convenient, much more useful unit for volume that you are going to run across as a future nurse or healthcare professional is the milliliter mLs. And turns out that an mL is exactly the same as a cubic centimeter, and it is exactly the same as something called a cc. CC is actually an abbreviation for cubic centimeter. In case you've always, if, in case you've ever wondered about that. So if you're giving someone an injection, uh, you may be told to give them, you know, 3.3 cc's, which is the same as 3.3 cubic centimeters, which is exactly the same as 3.3 milliliters. So if you have, if your if your um, order is to give so many cc's and you're holding a syringe that's measured in milliliters. Well, there's no real conversion to do. All you got to do is just say, well, it's the same thing. They are exactly the same thing. Milliliters, cubic centimeters, and cc's are exactly the same thing. And that's important to know because you're going to run across this as well. You don't want to be a person who says, well, how many milliliters is that? Well, it's the same thing. Okay. And if you're dealing with um, uh, really small injections, you might have you know, a microliter, which is a millionth of a liter, which is a hundredth of a, a thousandth of a cubic centimeter. Okay, and like I said before, uh, the SI unit may or may not be convenient in this case for volume in our cases, unless you're building, building bridges and pouring concrete, the cubic meter is not very convenient. Uh, milliliters and microliters and liters are a lot more convenient, but the but the cubic meter that's the s that is the SI unit. Okay, now next up we have mass. Now mass is the amount of matter. Matter being the stuff that everything's made of. All right. Now, don't confuse it with volume. Volume is space occupied. Mass is how much matter you have. You measure mass on a scale. When you step on the scale and measure how much you weigh, well, you're measuring how much mass you have. Your volume, on the other hand, well, it's true. You know, if you're bigger, you're going to weigh more. If you're smaller, you're going to weigh less, but that's something called density. Okay, you could have something that is really big and not have much mass, like the air in the room is big, but it doesn't weigh much. And you could have something that is pretty small, very small volume that weighs a lot, like a piece of piece of lead. It weighs a lot, but it doesn't take up much volume. So volume and mass are two completely separate things. You have space occupied and you have the amount of matter. Okay, now the SI unit for mass is the kilogram. And that's not too bad of a unit. It's the SI unit. It's a specific unit for mass, how much someone weighs. And I weigh about, I want to say I weigh about 75 kilograms today. Okay, that's about how much how much a regular sized person uh, will weigh. Um, 75 kilograms, and that's not so bad if you're trying to measure someone's if you have a patient and you're trying to measure how much they weigh so that you can calculate uh, dosages and I'm going to show you how to do uh, nurse math uh, and you have to do that. Well, that's not such a bad unit to use. However, if you're trying to measure out, say, um, medications. Maybe for metric, you might want to use grams in addition to kilograms. I'm going to go ahead and erase this and add the kilogram here because, you know, metric is SI and SI is metric. And so we can certainly use SI in our metric. But you might want to use grams. And particularly for medic medications, a lot of medications come in milligrams. I know that uh, I have to take a baby aspirin every morning and I believe it is, uh, you know what, I don't remember. I think it's 80 milligrams, so it is something like that. It's in milligrams. 
and a lot of other medications, maybe even in micrograms, which is an even smaller quantity. But all four of these, kilograms, grams, milligrams, micrograms, those are all metric. They're all powers of 10. In other words, you have you have a thousand grams in a kilogram. Well, that's a power of 10. You have one thousandth of a gram for every milligram and a millionth for every every microgram. So they're powers of 10, but there's only one SI unit, and that's that's the kilogram for mass. Now, the next one up is temperature. Temperature is generally a measure of how hot or how cold something is. And the unit for temperature is something called the Kelvin in SI. And that's abbreviated big K. And usually in metric, we don't measure temperatures in Kelvin. We measure them in degrees Celsius, although Kelvin is metric. Uh, and the reason is just, just what this, this is just what thermometers come in. They come in degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit, and usually, and we're going to have to be able to convert back and forth between those, but that's for chapter three. And so when we have degrees Celsius, if we want Kelvin, we add 273 to it. Now, why in the world do we need two different temperature scales here. And the reason is, is that Kelvin has no negative numbers. And that's important, uh, particularly when we get to uh, gas law calculations later in the semester, you'll have to do all the calculations in Kelvin because if you try to use negative numbers in your gas law calculations, bad things will happen. Degrees Celsius, it has negative temperatures. And if you're not familiar with Celsius, at least think about this. Um, if you're measuring uh, the temperature outside North Carolina with degrees Fahrenheit, well, right, right now it's pretty warm, but over the winter, uh, winter before last, I remember it was it was five below. It was negative five, negative five degrees Fahrenheit, which which works out to be uh, what is that? It was about a negative fifteen or something like that degrees Celsius. So you can have negative temperatures, but Kelvin, with the way the scale's set up, uh, you can't have negative temperatures, and that's important when we go on to do our calculations. And the final uh, unit that we're going to use is we're going to use something called time. We all know what time is. Right now, as you know, it's we've the seconds are going by. And for SI, there's only one. That's the second. And for metric, there's still only one um, unit that is metric for time, and that's the second. And you may say to yourself, well, you know, I'll accept. I'll take your word for it on, on SI, you know, SI is second, we got to pick some sort of unit. But why is uh, seconds uh, the only metric unit? Well, think about it for a second, <laughs> for a second. Um, how many seconds are in a minute? 60 seconds in a minute. That's not a power of 10. Powers of 10 is like 1, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. 100,000 million, that's power 10. Well, how many minutes are in an hour? 60 minutes, hold on, race that real quick. There's 60 minutes into an hour and there's 24 hours in a day, right? And so forth, none of those are, none of those are metric, none of those are powers of 10. Um, and so, but, if you know how to read a clock, it, uh, it's not something that you worry about. But if you're doing some sort of calculation that involves time, you have to use seconds. You have to use seconds. Okay, so that's that's units. Now, like I said at the very beginning, it is very important that for all calculations that we use units every time. Okay, it's a really bad habit to get into where you just use just the numbers.
Um, you may know exactly what you're doing as you're writing out the problem, but if you go back and look at the problem and all you see is 2.3 times 4.9, you may not remember what it was that you were trying to do. And not only that, but you can't cancel units. And we're going to get into canceling units in a little bit. Okay. All right. So let's move on to measured numbers and significant figures. All right. Oops, let's change colors here. I usually don't use red except to say, you know, don't be that person. That's when I do that. So let's go measured numbers. Okay. So a measured number is any time a measurement takes place. So so you have to do like a uh, you measure it. I mean, that sounds obvious, but that's different from counted or exact. You don't measure. Now, when you have a measured number, it's the last digit is always measured. Estimated, excuse me, I misspoke. The last digit is always estimated and counted or exact. And because of that, not everyone agrees. Because, you know, if it's estimated, it means that we, everyone can see it a little bit different. All right, and I'm going to show you what I mean in just a little bit. And counted, since you don't measure it, you're counting it. As long as you can count and you go one, two, three, four, five, six, then everyone agrees. That's generally the test. If you have to measure it, to be able to, to know what you have, then it's a measured number. And I'm gonna show you about estimating. I'm gonna show you how to estimate in just a second here, but but counted, everyone agrees. If we were in a classroom, we would look around the class and say, you know, there's 11 people here. And as long as you can count, everybody should agree there's 11 people. If I draw, if I put three X's here, everybody should agree as long as you can count. I mean, that's that's the requirement to be able to count. As long as everybody can count, you would say three X's. Now, the distance from here to Raleigh is about 90 miles. That's a measured number. Someone had to get, now this is the way you look at it, someone had to get out there and measure it. You know, they drove it or they looked at it, you know, from a standpoint of, uh, from a satellite or they flew over it or whatever, but someone had to go out there and measure it, okay? It's not exactly 90 miles. It's 90, and, and matter of fact, think about it. If you, if you take the corners differently from one person or you pass another person, you're going to go at a slightly different distance than another person, okay? So it has to be measured. But you know, there's three X's up there. That's counted, so that's exact, okay? Now, like people in a room, books in a bookshelf, uh, apples in a bag, those are all counted. Now, exact are things like one um, centimeter equals uh, 1,000, oh shoot, let's go, with ten, let's go with 10 millimeters. That would be exact because that's defined. You don't go out and you measure the 10 millimeters. You say it is 10 millimeters, or we can say, 100 centimeters equals a meter. These are all defined. 
okay? Or there's a thousand grams in a kilogram. Okay, now you can tell these are exact or measured because they're, they're I mean, they, pardon me, you can tell that they're defined because you'll find them in a table and they're set. Also, if you think about it, we're actually counting out the number of centimeters. We know how many centimeters we have, so there's a hundred. There's a hundred of them. We count them out: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You know, onto a hundred, and we say, "Well, that's a meter." Okay, so these are all defined now. So you have measured. You have to measure it. You have counted. Count them on your fingers. That's counted, and defined. You'll see it in a table, or it's a or it's a set relationship. All right, now. Let me show you how to measure a ruler, how to use a ruler. Let's see if I can get it up here. And we'll go ahead and see if I can turn this. I always have a little trouble on this one trying to get it to turn. Let's see. Well, let's forget about that ruler. Well, I can't get rid of it. Let's see. Delete, delete. Hold on, let me restart this. Where'd it go? I'll just sketch out the ruler. All righty. So let me show you how to read a ruler, and then we're going to, and I'm going to show you what I mean by estimating. Okay. So let's say we have this ruler right here. I'm going to draw a ruler. Pretty good sized one. There we go. And we're going to say this is zero centimeters, one centimeter, two centimeters. All right, this is a metric ruler. And I'm going to point out that these guys right here, these markings, these guys, these are millimeter marks. Okay. There's 10 of them for every centimeter. You can count for yourself. You can see it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's 10 marks in between the zero and the one and the one and the two, and those are called millimeter marks. Okay. And so let's say we're trying to measure a length, and the length that we're going to measure is right here. Okay. There it is. Now, how do we measure that distance? Well, we have, uh, when we're making a measurement, we have numbers that we are certain about, and we have the estimated digit. The estimated digit is always the last digit. Okay, so what are we certain about? So I am certain, I am certain at least one centimeter, okay? And so we say one. Now, the next digit is gonna be one point something. And so I'm gonna mark over here and I'm gonna say that I am certain, let me change colors here. Let's change, I'm gonna use black for the next one. And I'm gonna say, I am certain that this is at least 0.2. And so I say 1.2, okay? Let me knock this back just a little bit. It's at least 0.2. Now, it's more than 1.2 right now. Where that little blue arrow is, it's not 1.2. It's 1.2 and something more. Now I know, now I know it's at least 1.2, but it's less than 1.3. I know. Okay. So we're going to have to estimate that last digit. 
we're gonna have to estimate that last digit. Now, the way we estimate these digits is we look in between the tick marks. That's what those little millimeter marks are called. We look between the tick marks and we estimate, we imaginarily, we imagine splitting this up into smaller tick marks. Now it's not printed on the ruler, so this is why we call it an estimation. And so I'm going to estimate, I'm going to estimate this and I'm going to say my estimation is going to be 0 .00, 0 .00 what? What are we going to say here? I'm going to say that's about an eight. Now you, you might say, well, that looks more like a seven. And some other folks might say, well, that looks more like a nine. Well, you certainly wouldn't want to say it looks like a three. Okay, it's definitely past the halfway point. And so I would estimate 0 .08, and so we would say the estimated digit is eight. And so that would be estimated that's the last digit so i was able to estimate the last digit and so my best guess for where that blue arrow is is 1.28 now everyone everyone if you're using a ruler you should have at least 1.2 something you might say 1.28 you might say 1.27 Someone else might say 1.229. Which one's right? Well, they're all right because that's what it means to be estimated. But if you say something other than 1.2, it's not right. If you say 1.3, I, I would question, you know, whether you can count tick marks. I count two tick marks. It doesn't make it to the third one. It only makes it past the second one. So that's 1.2. And then you have to estimate that last digit. Now it's very, very important that you always estimate that last digit always estimate that last digit so let's take a look i'm gonna um, do another one here and i think it might be easier just to go ahead and just draw another ruler yeah i'm just gonna do that i'm gonna draw another ruler and so let's draw another ruler so and i'm gonna show you something here One, two, three, four. I'm gonna show you something here. Okay, so now we should be able to estimate using a ruler. Okay. So why don't I put something up here and you tell me, I'm gonna just, just draw a mark here and you put in a chat box. What do you think? You know, you put in the chat box. I'm gonna Make a mark right there. And just take a moment and, and you tell me in the chat box, what do you think you got? What do you think that is? Just take a moment. Just type the number in. Okay. Well, I look at this and I see that it's at least one centimeter because we're past the one centimeter mark. I count tick marks over and I go one, two, three, four, five. It's past that middle one. That's five, six, seven. And then I look, it's not quite halfway in between that, that seven and eight tick mark. And so I'm gonna say it's 1.74 centimeters. Oh, okay. Well, good job, Jaden. So I'm gonna say that's 1.74 centimeters, okay? How about like, uh, now what do we do if we're on the line? What do we do if we're on the line? Let's say that we're right on the line, as close as I can tell, on the line. What do you do? Well, first off, I know it's at least two centimeters because it's right on the line. Now, let me extend out this ruler just a little bit. 
does it make it to the first tick mark? In other words, 2.1. No, it doesn't. So it must be 2.0 if it's right on the line because you don't make it to the next tick mark. If you're right, right on the line, since we didn't make it to the first tick mark over there, are we just a hair over or a hair under? And since we're right on the line, we're right on the line. And so we would say 2.00 centimeters. Look at it this way. This part right here, I know. And that part is estimated. So if you're right on the line, the last digit, the estimated digit has got to be zero if you're right on the line, okay? It's gotta be right on the line. And the last digit has to be zero, okay? So even right over here, if I was to say right there and I'm right on the line, okay? That would actually be, well, what would you say? You would say, well, I know it's one centimeter at least. And I also know that it made it to that first tick mark. So that's 1.1. So those I know, I know it's 1.1, but I'm not a hair over, I'm not a hair under. So it must be 1.10 centimeters. So, so keep that in mind. Anytime you have something that is right on the line, that last digit has to be estimated. Okay, so let's do one more. How about if I was to make the mark right there, okay, what would we do? Well, what's our certain digits? Well, I know it's not as it's not one centimeter, so it must be zero point because that's as far as we got right there with the zero centimeters. And we made it to at least the fifth tick mark for the millimeter mark, so that's 0. 0.5. And then I'm going to estimate that last little bit. And I would say maybe that's 0.52 maybe. And that's it. So this number right here is estimated. OK, so that's how you read a ruler. Now, for other measurements, like things like, like uh, mass, and volume, it works the same way. Um, if you're trying to measure the volume of something, let's say with a graduated cylinder and it has volume marks and this is all in milliliters, well, where it reads, you're still going to have to estimate in between the marks. And so that might be, let's see, one, two, three, four, that might be, let's say, 4.8 milliliters. Okay, so the last digit is still estimated. And the same thing happens even with uh, scales. If you go step on a scale, like I did this morning, I was 168.2, and you step on that scale in the morning, there's actually a number that is hidden from you many times that you can't see right here electronically it's estimated it's hidden and maybe it's it's saying that it's that it's nine or eight or six or zero or something like that but a lot of times there's a there's a hidden electronic number and many times even this number might be the actual electronic estimated number it depends on the scale but the last number whether it's electronic or something you read with your eyes the last number is always estimated always it's always estimated. Okay, now we get into these things called significant figures, and this is where it comes from. And this is something that drives people crazy when you first use it, but once you get used to the idea, it's not so bad. And you have this thing called significant, significant. Yeah. Okay. Now the thing about significant figures is if it's measured, it's significant.
by the way, you never write out significant figures. You say sig fig, sig figs, okay? Now, the first thing about significant figures, if it's measured, then it's significant. And if it's not measured, then it's not significant, okay? And you may say to yourself, well, what do you mean by that? Well, let's go back over here to this last slide that we did, okay? All of these numbers are significant. Every single one of these is significant and every digit in these numbers is significant. We're gonna to get to trying to decide whether something is significant or not by looking at it. But every digit is significant because every single one of these on this, on this slide here, we measured, okay? Now we go back over here um, let's go back over here. And so if I measured it, it's significant. Now, if I didn't measure it, it's not significant. Okay, so what do we have over here that, that was not measured? Well, there's only one thing on this whole slide here that I didn't measure, and that's right here. Not measured. Why is it there? I mean, I, I didn't measure the zero. I just said it's there is there is nothing to measure there. It's a placeholder. It's a leading zero. Something called a leading zero. It's 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 not measured. I didn't measure it. I could have added some more zeros in front of it, and it's not measured. Okay, the five two was measured. The zero is just there to tell you that there's a decimal there. Okay, so that's not measured. Okay, so. Why do we need significant figures in the first place? And I'll tell you why. And it's because uh, we have these things called placeholders and placeholders generally are not significant because you don't measure them. That's where it comes down to. So we have to decide whether a number is significant or not. So there's, there's all sorts of rules. Your textbook um, spends, I think, three or four pages going over significant figures or significant zeros and rounding and all this other good stuff but there's really there's really only two rules and here are the two rules for deciding whether a number is significant or not first off if you measured it it's significant there it is now main rules are like this uh, let me make sure i'm using the right color here leading zeros are never significant. All right, leading zeros are never significant. Never, ever, 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 okay? Trailing zeros, and I'm gonna show you what, what I mean by trailing and what I mean by, by uh, leading, just a second, but I'm just write down the two rules here. Trailing zeros are not significant unless there is a decimal somewhere. And by the way, that decimal can be anywhere. Okay. Leading zeros are never significant. Never, ever, ever, ever. That's why I put it in red. Trailing zeros are not significant unless there's a decimal somewhere. And that decimal can be anywhere. Okay. Now, if it's not trailing and not, zero, and not leading, it's significant. Okay, if it's not these two cases, then, then zeros are significant. And the whole point of this trying to tell whether something's significant or not just by looking at it is really all about the zeros. If it's not zero, then it's significant. So let me show you some examples here. Okay, so let's take a look at this number here. So let's start with some, some uh, trailing zeros. And let's say we have a number 
Okay. That is 123,000. Now, how many sig? Now, now the now the skill here. The skill is how many sig figs do you have? Okay. And so I look at this and I go, well, you know what? These are all significant up here. I know those are significant. But what about these? Now, trying to tell whether something's significant or not, we're really, what we care about are the zeros, okay? So if we look at this, these zeros are trailing behind. That's why we call them trailing zeros. This is trailing. All right, those are trailing zeros. So I see the see the zeros trailing behind. And there's no decimal. There's no decimal in there. So therefore, this is three. SF sig figs, we just say SF. Therefore, it's 3SF. Trailing, it has no decimal. What if I was to put a decimal in there? Now what? These are still trailing. These are still trailing. But what do we have here? We have a decimal. It has a decimal. So we have to count. So we're going to go in here and I'm going to count. And so we go, we go switch colors here. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six. This is six SF. Does it matter where that decimal is? No, it sure doesn't. Um, I can rewrite the number again. That's that's uh, 1,230. The top one was 123,000. I can say, there we go. That's also a trailing zero. Okay, but there's a decimal. And so you go, and we count again, we just count one, two, three, four, five, six, and this is also six SF. Okay. How about this number right here? Well, that's not trailing. And it's not leading either. it's not in front more on leading in just a second so everything counts remember what i said the only time these zeros don't count is if they're trailing or leading and so that's one two three four and that's four sf all right now let's take a look at some leading remember what i said over here Leading zeros are never significant. Trailing zeros are not significant unless you have a decimal. But let's take a look at what a leading zero looks like. Well, this is a leading zero. These are all leading. Whoops. These are all leading. They're placeholders. You don't measure placeholders. They just show you how small or how big something is. And so placeholders are not significant, but that's a that's a leading zeros. So this is this is uh, one, two, three. This is three SF. How about how about this number right here? There's no decimal in here. You don't need decimals. You see with the trailing, the trailing was significant if they have a decimal, but leading is never ever 
ever, ever. So it doesn't matter. That's lead. And this is 4SF. And how about this guy right here? How about how many sig figs do we have here? Well, we take a look at it, and what are we going to see? We see lead, but I also see trail. So these over here, they don't ever count. But these over here on the right, they do count. And so this would be, switch colors here, this would be one, two, three, four, five. Five SF. And finally, yeah, I'm gonna do one more. Let's say we had this number right here. How many sig figs would that be? Well, I look over here, that's a trail. There's a decimal. And there's no leading. And these numbers in here, these zeros, those are measured. They just happen to land on zero. Okay. But one thing, sure, remember what I said. If it's leading, you don't count it. And if it's trailing, you do only if you have a decimal and nothing else matters. So what do we have here? So actually, that whole number, everything counts. Everything counts. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That would be seven SF. And there you go, you have seven SF. And so that's how you look at the numbers and decide uh, what is significant and what's not. Now, in all cases, if it was significant, part of the significant figures, that last number, whether it's five, three, or zero, that last number uh, was measured and estimated. Okay.